two months ago I made a video. I said this is going to be the last video I make with Liz. Well, you got to make another video with Liz. So, things have been getting increasingly... She's been lashing out more. Um, I've noticed her swearing at the board meetings, at the town council meetings, during her audience participation. Um, that's not something that you do, but she's made it an effort to make sure she swears at each each speech lately. Um, I, I called for Chief Fox to to intervene two months ago when I made the video on screen here. Uh, obviously, I don't expect him to be watching these videos, but more of a a, a wake-up call. Someone should be doing something. Over the past two months, her and her friends, well, longer than that probably, but over the past two months, her and her friends have been working themselves up into a frenzy. And the stuff that they've been saying publicly is, it's wrong at best. Um, at worst, it's lies, but you can decide that yourself. So, let's, let's take a walk back to August 13th. Mother speaks out at Enfield High School after an Enfield High School football player called a racist slur while fundraising. So, this was Kelly Jackson's son. Her 14-year-old son, Jacoby, was knocking on doors looking for donations when he started talking to a mother and son. And the son opened the window, and he's 22, and proceeded to tell him to get the F off their property with the N-word, and then told him he would shoot him, and then proceeded to berate him as he walked away. Police found the man who did, and were told he admitted to it. But despite the terrible language, police say it doesn't break the law. As far as the threat, Enfield's police chief tells us no one else could verify any threatening statements. As such, probable cause to make an arrest, which is legally required, could not be established. School officials are condemning this tonight, and Enfield superintendent is hosting a community conversation next week to discuss race and inclusion in town. But Kelly can't believe her son was called the N-word. Why'd they pick a picture that was so old? I think it's old. I don't, that doesn't look like a 14-year-old. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. And there's no consequence. According to them, it's their First Amendment right. So, I, I mean, what can I do about that? It's their First Amendment right. Um, do I agree with it? No. Do I think it's disgusting? Yes. Um, do we need a change? Yes. Kelly is speaking with us tonight, hoping it's a teaching moment. So, that happened. And I didn't get involved. Good or bad, I didn't really get involved. I didn't make any videos about it. I didn't make any comments about it. I, I stayed out of it because it's a pretty bad thing to say. But my staying out of it, they couldn't let that go. So, then we have Kelly talking about things at the October 25th Board of Ed meeting. On the other side, you talked about anything but what happened and couldn't be bothered with the conversation. 
we also had one who stated that he didn't know what systemic racism was. Well, let me explain it to you real fast. Systemic racism is when your son calls the police due to being a victim of a hate crime, but the police victimized the opposing party so much that they ignored the man admitting, he admitted it, to threatening my son. And then to sit up here and recite the school motto and agree uh, to the equity statement is such a slap in the face to our black and brown population. I don't know how you sit up there meeting after meeting and feel good about yourself. A person came up two meetings ago and said, let's not make a mountain out of a molehill. No, let's. Let's talk about how to protect our black and brown students because this is not the first time. A couple years ago, another black student was fundraising for football and was called names and followed down the street. I will always wonder what happened with that student, with that situation. All right, I'm gonna get a little nitpicky here, but she's upset that someone was called names and followed. I can understand. However, now this confirmation of my infield residency may come as a disappointment to some especially the person who decided to try to follow me home after the last Board of Education meeting. When I realized they were tailing me, I crossed the river and led them to Suffield Meadows, a place I have no connection to whatsoever. I do not appreciate being creeped on, and I have no idea of this person's motivations or of their intent, especially since this occurred immediately after a Board of Education meeting at which I was heckled as I spoke to three minutes afforded each resident. Having had some time to think about the events of that night, I believe there are some things that need to be said. So, I'll give you two guesses at who it was that was following him. You guessed it. Kelly Jackson. So, then we get to the community conversation that Superintendent Dresick set up. an hour or two before the Board of Ed meeting when he wasn't even going to be there. I'm not sure if he knew he wasn't going to be there, but either way, he wasn't there. So let's go back a little here. So Kelly made a comment about, both Kelly and Liz made comments about the Republicans didn't go to the community conversation and they couldn't stay and all this. Well, if I'm looking here, I see John Ungeyer back here, Janet Cushman, Gina Cree, and Jonathan LeBlanc. All four Republican members on the Board of Ed are at the event. There's Tina, there's Amanda, Dr. Kalman, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Mr. Hamry and uh, the other guy there too, I don't know where they are, I don't see them. But I'm sure they're there. Everybody's there. There's Kelly with Liz and Gina. Three amigos, I guess. Okay, so I'm here with Liz, who, who has made it quite clear that she's a big mouth, and that has been confirmed by other people who've walked by who said she's a really big mouth. So, I'm your Liz. Yep, can confirm. She's got a big mouth. Give me pause. 
called. And you'll get the tape. They're going to show you everything. So here it is. Tina and Jonathan are both leaving. It's not over yet. But Tina doesn't get a hard time for leaving. <laughs> 